Sometimes you feel a little left out, right? Because you see all these other booktubers having these like tags and having these like guest appearances and stuff, and no one ever asks me. And when I ask them why, they say, oh, well, we just thought that your channel was so big that uh, you wouldn't come on. Like, guys, this channel's not that big, really. And uh, I would love to do some of these tag videos. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that now, even though I wasn't tagged, because uh, I can do that. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back today with a little something extra special. Yes, I know it's supposed to be sci-fi September, but guys, I just got kind of behind this week, and I just I saw something on a good friend's channel, and I said, that sounds like a lot of fun. I think I want to do this. So first off, I want to thank my guy, Alan, from Library of Alexandria, not just for keeping putting out fresh and awesome content, but for making this video about this rapid-fire 50 questions. It was a lot of fun listening to some of his responses in that, and even though I wasn't tagged, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do it anyway because it seemed like a lot of fun. So, uh, guys, check out his channel if you haven't. Super awesome guy. He basically takes my energy level and ramps it up to 100, and that is Alan's channel. And I think his content is some of the best out there, and I think he's an all-around great, great guy. So, uh, before anyone says, oh, you're still in other people's content, no, I want to give 100% credit to Alan for this idea. I just look like a lot of fun, like I said. And even though they didn't invite me to play in the reindeer games, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do it anyway. What this is, is just 50 questions, and you kind of go rapid fire. I haven't rehearsed these or anything. I mean, while I was listening to his thoughts, I did kind of think, hmm, I think I would pick this or that. But there's some that I was like, okay, uh, I have no idea. So, we're just going to kind of see what happens. Now, uh, I will put these questions in the, uh, in the description below in case you want to look for a specific question, but I don't know. Rapid fire means we're going to roll through them really quick and no, I'm not going to timestamp each one of these questions. So there you go. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and kick it off here, guys. 50 questions. Number one, hardback or paperback. I think for me, uh, I love me some hardcover. It's it's not it's really bright. Uh, it, I like hardcover the best, I, not just because they look great. I like to actually, if I'm sitting up and reading, I love to read out of a hardcover just because that's what I did most of my life. But I have kind of gotten really fond of trade paperbacks lately because you can do the same. You can lay them flat on the desk. Uh, you can beat the crap out of them and the spine will not break. And I do not like breaking spines. So uh, I'm going hardcover. You know, you're making me pick, but I have really come around on uh, on trade paperbacks. But uh, mass market, <laughs> only if it's to match a set like I did with Malazan. Number two, ebooks or physical copies. I always prefer physical guys. I love the smell. I love the way that books feel in my hand. I love it. That's just what I've done my whole life. However, when I'm reading in bed, I do love my Kindle. It's so lightweight. I'm the I'm that one more chapter type, and I gotta stop at the end of a chapter. So I will find myself being like, I'm gonna read the next chapter, and boom, I'm falling asleep. And instead of a you know a seven pound Stephen King book hardcover hit me in the face, having that you know one tenth of a pound nice Kindle Oasis hit you in the face, not a big deal. That's actually why I read kind of like down here now. But uh, I do love it. It's just it's really super convenient in bed, things like that. And plus, you know, I don't have to sleep with my lamp on, and that doesn't keep my wife up, and everyone is happy this way. Number three secondhand or new copies. Now, I will buy secondhand, guys, but it has to look brand new. Uh, so, I mean, I will go to like a half price books or any kind of used bookshop, depending where you're at. And if it looks like new, I will buy it. If it looks like it's been beat to crap, absolutely, I won't buy it. I'll always try to go with new. But uh, yeah, sure, I love a good uh, frugal buy every once in a while. Uh, audiobooks or nah. I mean, I think most people who watch this channel know where I stand on that. Uh, I, I get this reputation as someone who says that audiobooks don't count, even though I did a video talking about, yes, if you consume the story, it counts. And I don't know who, who decided they get to be the judge if this counts or not. But for me, guys, it's just an ADD thing. I just cannot. I mean, I have plenty. Like, reading, I can concentrate just fine. Listening, not so much. It comes with years of blocking out your wife and kids, I think. And you can't just turn that off with just a switch. But um, I, there's lots of people, like on my Discord, that just audio, you know, and I respect that. That's the way you're consuming the story. That's the way that's best for your life. It's great. But for me, I just, I can't pay attention to them. I zone out. And uh, if I'm listening to anything like that, I'm listening to a podcast because you know what? If you don't listen to your podcast for a couple seconds, you're not missing a city and a name and a character and somebody that did this. And you're like, wait, what? You know, so I tried doing that just with Dresden Files. Everybody talked about how great the Dresden Files audiobooks are. And just, I couldn't pay attention. I was missing things. So it's just a, it's just a me thing, guys. Do you cover by, I assume that means I buy a book judged off of its cover. I always say, and you're probably going to think this sounds ridiculous because I say it all the time, never, ever 
buy a book based off of the cover. Unless it is awesome. And that is how I discovered Red Rising, you guys. Now, it was a good friend of mine, uh, Armin, who actually got me to convince me to read the series, but I did buy the series long before that based off of those awesome covers. So, yeah, I've been guilty of it in the past. There's been lots of things I bought a second time. Hi, dude. Uh, just because I love the way that the covers look, you know. So, uh, these things will happen sometimes. But uh, it, it isn't anything where I intentionally go and be like, oh, I got to get that just because the cover's awesome. But, I mean, it will uh, it will get on my radar that way. I think it's about those... Uh, the, the I didn't buy them. An actual a, a patron, a good friend, Steph, she bought them for me. But those uh, Day of the Bad books by uh, Miss Chakra Bordy, I think I'm saying her name right? Those covers are slick, you know, and it makes you want to read it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not above that at all. Uh, your favorite cover that you own. Well, that Dune Deluxe Edition that I just talked about. There's a reason it is front-facing. Can you guys see it? It's behind me. Is it still there? I think it's still there. Yeah, it's up there. It's just not reflecting in the light very well anymore. Uh, I, I think that, that that Dune Deluxe cover just kind of symbolizes it. Every, those are the two colors. The, the, the orangish color obviously make you think of Spice Melange, and then that, that blue color, which is what the eyes look like in Dune. That's just, those two colors just are symbolic of what I think of when I think of Dune. And I think it just it captures it perfectly. And the thing is, that, that cover is so awesome. Take, take the dust jacket off, and it's even cooler. And then you got the blue edges, the sprayed edges. Oh my God, it's just such a gorgeous book. Uh, I love it to death. Uh, your least favorite cover that you own. I'm kind of cheating here, I'm kind of looking around. Those US covers for The Witcher are terrible. They are terrible. That's the reason that I actually thought that those books were written after the games. Like, you know how like Halo started writing books like after the games got real big? I thought that's what it was with Witcher. I had no idea because those US covers use the video game art for the front of those books. So yeah, just just, just a disaster. Just a disaster. I, I can't stand They're so ugly. First book that you ever read. Now, I'm assuming this means like a novel. If you're talking about like a novel, it was The Hobbit by, by Mr. Tolkien. You might have heard of him. He's, I think he's going to be big. But um, I think if you're going before that, um, Berenstain Bears, Dr. Seuss, things like that. Things that you would expect a, a young toddler to be reading, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming that we mean novel there. It's definitely going to be The Hobbit. Uh, what else we got? Where was I? Uh, the last book you finished. I finished uh, We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis Taylor yesterday. And uh, I'll talk about those thoughts in my next weekly update that will probably be coming tomorrow. Mm, last series that you finished. What series did I finish? Did I finish a series this year? I feel like I'm in the middle of several. Outrider Revelations. Does that count? I mean, because it's just a six book series, but then there's other series within that universe. So I'm counting it. Ryra Revelations. Awesome stuff, guys. Awesome stuff. I've talked about Ryra constantly on this channel, and I think you guys should definitely check that out. The last book that you bought, I just bought The Wisdom of Crowds. That is the Final book in the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, set within the first Law Universe. Just came out on Tuesday. And yes, I got my, my advanced reading copy, but I'm always going to support the man and the legend, Mr. Abercrombie. And those those books, it's like really weird. I think that the UK covers are nicer, but I think the US ones are really nice too. So that rarely ever happens. Usually it seems like one of the, like you look at that new Stephen King, like Billy Summers, the US cover is amazing. And the UK cover is pretty lousy. So it's a really, really neat feat when, uh, a neat feat, really neat feat <laughs> when, uh, when you get to, covers are, are great abroad as they well as they are here in the states i really should have like made these a different color or something so i could realize where i was your favorite genre now i mean my favorite genre is going to be fantasy obviously but let's get a little more specific so you don't sound uh i like the coming of age subgenre and if you set that within a fantasy universe i guess that, that usually works pretty good i think that's why i liked uh, the golden age and berserk so much because it really did that you know some of the best i've seen but i just love the coming of age story not only does it hit you in those nostalgic feelings, but it's just you find an author like a Mr. King that can just write kids, you know, right there in between like like the age of like nine and twelve, kind of just just perfectly. When you find an author who can do that, it just sings to me, and I love that thing. Robin Hobb did it pretty good in Assassin's Apprentice. I mean, I can think of several uh, fantasy kind of kind of setting, but most of this stuff really comes from King. I think that King writes coming of age better than anybody, and I think that's why. You know, obviously, it's my favorite author, and that's why it's my my favorite little subgenre there. What is your favorite book in that genre? Well, I'm going to say it because I love uh, Dune is my favorite book. It by Stephen King is my second favorite book, and a big part of it is because it is a coming of age story. You got seven of them in there, you know. So it's a really, really great book that I've talked about 
three times. It's the only book I've ever reviewed more than once, guys. I've done it three times on this channel. One was before this was a channel, though, so I don't really count it. Don't 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 judge me too harshly off that. What genre do you never reach for? This is easy, guys. Romance. I do not go for romance. Now, I'm not opposed to some romance in my books, but just really silly, lovey stuff. Ugh. I guess you say just too much grimdark in my blood. It's really weird because I love Gone with the Wind. You know, I, I love me some good, a like really well-written love story. But just, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know what kind of romance I'm talking about. I mean, I, I did read some Harlequin romance novels on this channel. And when I lost a bet with my wife, and that's the moral of the story, guys. Do not bet with your wife. Do you read poetry? Outside of Mr. Edgar Allan Poe, I do not. I've never really clicked with poetry at all. I don't know if it's because they forced it on us in school or what. It's just, it's just never really clicked for me. I don't read them in epigraphs like the ones in Malazan. I've gotten, I've gotten criticized for that. I, I just stopped reading those. To be honest, guys, I think poetry just might be above my thought level. I just, I, I don't know. I feel like there's so much to decipher. I feel like you can kind of make out of it what you want to make out of it. I don't know. It's just, it's just never really clicked for me. But, but Poe, my guy, now he, he is really, really good. Maybe, maybe really cutting my teeth on Poe and then reading everyone else. I was just kind of like, how about we get a little bit of macabre in here, you know? But I've just, I've never really uh, grasped it very much. Haikus are even worse. Have I, uh, I guess it's asking, uh, have you read popular science? I, I've read some. Uh, when I was in college the second time here, the most recent time, I just I graduated at 41, you guys. 42. I don't remember how old I was. Anyway, it happened during the virus that shall not be named. I graduated. It's never too late to go back, you guys. There you go. Uh, I took astrophysics, uh, two astrophysics courses in there because uh, what a lot of people might not know is I'm a big time space nerd, but not the math part. Uh, when I took astrophysics, I was like, great, I'm going to get to study planets and the stars. And it's like, hey, here's your calculus, solve this equation. And I'm like, what does this got to do with, you know, guys, physics, breaking news, it's a lot of math, right? But I did read some Carl Sagan. Uh, I've read some Neil deGrasse Tyson, things like that. Uh, I felt like those two gentlemen were able to put things like physics and space and understanding of space into a way that someone can very easily understand it. But he's also got the heavy science there for those people who are looking for it to show that, you know, hey, uh, we are actual scientists, by the way. You know, we're not just like made for TV scientists, like a lot of people have uh, started to uh, kind of relate to Mr. Tyson. But that's a conversation for another time. But that's, that's about it. I like to keep my science more science fiction, if I am saying so. Uh, middle grade, I'm guessing they're asking like uh, middle grade level books. Uh, really, if I'm just I'm reading with my kids, you know, reading Harry Potter. We plan to read Percy Jackson together if we ever get through Harry Potter, because uh, little brother just keeps falling asleep each night. Uh, but we've been slowly going through that over a year now, and we're in book five of that. Uh, so yeah, I see it with that. Or if it's just nostalgia, you know, I started rereading Chronicles of Narnia, and I would say it's very much middle grade level or, or earlier, you know, uh, Mark Twain, things like that. Sure, sure, I'll do that. Some of the uh, the classics, I guess you would say, are more middle grade level, junior high level. Uh, I mean, hey, good is good. It don't matter really what reading level that it is, in my opinion. I know I get a reputation as someone who hates young adult. Uh, no, it's it's not young adult that I that I dislike. Not at least not like that. Uh, that's that's going to read down a rabbit hole we don't want to do. But yeah, yeah, some of those things I, I will definitely uh, get into that. My favorite bookish item. A viewer actually sent me that right there, the little orange card. It is the Litany Against Fear from Dune. You know, Fear is a Mind Killer. You know, hey, the movie's coming out soon, guys. So I feel like a more of you are going to get into this. I'm reading it again right now. Yes, uh, full disclosure, I think anybody who uh, has watched the channel knows Dune is my favorite book. And when I got that nice little gift from a viewer there, I had to make sure I had it you know, very, very open and front faced and uh, showing you guys because I love it because that's uh, that's something that's not just a fun little catchphrase, guys. That's something that's been very important in my life. And watch my Why You Should Read Dune video to see exactly why or else I'll start talking about that for the next 20 minutes. What is your favorite, I'm sorry, what's your current bookmark? It's actually, I guess I'll go ahead and show you since it's her. It's actually uh, Mr. Pennywise, the dancing clown, if you guys can see it or not. Yeah. Hiya, Georgie. Uh, really, it's, uh, I have a bunch that I use mostly. I, I just started using that one because someone sent it to me. But I usually use this, uh, this Saruman, the white one, that I got from, gosh, it was like in 2000, right before Fellowship of the Ring came out, they started releasing merchandise for the movie. And guys, yes, I was counting down the minutes 
until that movie. So anything that came out, I bought it. So I've got this 21 year old bookmark that I still use like crazy and pretty much always am using it. You just kind of caught me in the one time that I wasn't using it. What is the strangest object that you've used for a bookmark? A dagger. There's a story here. It's up there with my first law books. I've got a dagger. I don't know if you can see it. I don't, I'm not used to the new camera angle yet, guys. Sorry. Uh, but uh, I have a dagger up there. I keep it with my first law books. And it was just uh, one time I was just looking around because I will not I will not dog your pages. That is awful. That is awful. I think that's book abuse. So I do not do it. And I don't just open up a lay it on the ground because that's just asking for trouble. So that was the closest object. I just grabbed it and just kind of put it in. <laughs> Unsheathed it. Just put it in there. So, I mean, it was very, very temporary. But I guess that would be the weirdest thing outside of like a a business card or anything that you can find really a hot wheel car you know, i do have kids so i've done stuff like that but yeah dagger would probably be uh the weirdest one book jackets or nah absolutely absolutely book jacket the dust jackets i love them i think they make your hardcovers look absolutely stunning I always take them off. People ask me, how do you keep them in such nice condition? Well, I don't read the book with them on. I take them off because, one, you got the kid variable. They get a hold of those. Forget about it, right? And also, I feel like you're just you're just, you're crumbling it up, you know, opening and closing it. You're getting fingerprints all over. And I know you guys are like, well, dude, are you reading your books or are you just polishing them? I like them to look nice when they're on the shelf. So I keep the dust jackets up there. But, yes, absolutely for the dust jackets. Let's see. Really small print. I really messed this up, guys. Who is your fictional boyfriend? <laughs> um, I guess it's Ben Barnes, right? From <laughs> Shadow of Bone. <laughs> uh, that's kind of an inside joke. Uh, me and uh, he played the Darkling on the Shadow and Bone, and a good friend and I kept on just joking about how we, we were finding him more attractive than the women were. So uh, I, I guess you say Conan. I think Conan is one of my favorite fictional characters ever because I was reading those comics when I was a kid, and you know. We wanted to be Conan, you know, so I, I guess you would say that, but uh, no, I, I pretty much keep my flirtations off the page, really. Your favorite book couple, I uh, gotta go with Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara, Gone with the Wind. I think it is the finest love story ever told. And even though they are absolutely toxic and terrible for one another, I can't help but want to see those two kids work it out. Your favorite book villain. You know, you could probably pick a handful of Stephen King ones, and I would say that's it. That's definitely it. Uh, I got to go with Randall Flagg, though, since he is my favorite Stephen King villain. Uh, he goes all across the multiverse. You see him in several books. I'm not going to tell you which ones in case you haven't read everything because it is kind of a shocker to some people when they realize, hey, this is that character from that other Stephen King book that I read, but Flagg is awesome. Don't really have another reason outside of that. Favorite book friendship. You know, I'm always going to go with the classic. I always want to go with like Sam and Frodo, and that and that, and that counts. But uh, getting a little more modern, I love Royce and Hadrian in the Right Era series. I think their friendship is just superb, and how much those two gentlemen actually care for each other is really, really just believable. I never feel like it's forced. I feel like they really, genuinely care for one another, and it's earned. It feel it feels really good. But I also really love Darrow and Severo from Red Rising. They that has that is a really strong bromance that I've always been in favor of since the very, very early parts of the first Red Rising book. I've always really been for that friendship and it just gotten better and better as the series went on. And uh, yeah, yeah, when, whenever they, those two are together, that series just soars, man. And when they're apart, it's good. But when they're together, it's just it's, it's some of the best stuff you'll ever read out there, especially when it comes to friendship. Series, trilogies, or standalone books. I think I like to go, kind of split the middle here. I like to go with trilogies because um, I feel like standalones are great. I mean, they're great. That's why I read Michael Crichton. That's why I read Stephen King. You know, I, I love a good standalone. It helps you. And when you're in fantasy, guys, it's hard to find the standalone. I think that's why I like Warbreaker by Sanderson so much. But I think a trilogy, if it's a planned trilogy, meaning you had an act one, two, and three, and you stuck to it. You didn't say, oh, I better go ahead and break this last book into two or three. You know, you, you didn't Brent Weeks it. You know, you didn't do those kinds of things. You just kept it to the story you originally planned to tell. I feel like that's usually the best way. Now, if you write a book one and it's a big success and you want to continue it going, I never feel like you find that really happy medium. If you really plan it to be three books from go, I feel like it's really really great so i got to go with trilogies on this one because if when they're done right man they're just done perfectly uh weird reading habit it's a good question i don't know if they have any i mean how weird can you get while reading 
I guess sometimes like the fan casting, you know, when you're you're in your head, I will imagine like, you know, certain actors playing some of these roles. And the thing that makes it weird is a lot of the times I'll imagine an actor in my head that looks absolutely nothing like what the author described. So, you know, that's the joy of doing it in your head is you can be anyone that you want, you know. You'd have to worry about, uh, oh, that actor's dead or, you know, that actor would never do this role or something like that. You can cast anybody you want in your head, right? And it doesn't matter how it goes, right? What is your favorite film, or I'm sorry, what's your favorite book adaptation? It's got to be Fellowship of the Ring, you guys. I, I don't think I'll ever have as visceral of a response to seeing an adaptation on screen like I did Fellowship of the Ring. Now, we got a chance here in October with Dune, but with Fellowship of the Ring, it was just one of those things. I'm really confident about Dune. I've always been confident about it because I think that Denny V understands that story and he's an incredible incredible filmmaker and i just felt like he loves that story so much he wasn't going to put it out if it wasn't going to be done justice so i wasn't really worried about it i was worried about lord of the rings i just fantasy was something that was not really well made in a live action medium to that point <laughs> and i would argue it hasn't been done very well uh for very much since but uh just up until the, the really guys i think we were up to moria in that movie where I was still like, this can go either way. And in the Minds of Moria scenes, I was just a basket of tears. Just like I could not believe that they had pulled this off. And it's just incredible. I mean, you go back and watch it now. still my favorite one of that entire trilogy. It's just so damn good. And it's so, so amazing. I mean, it still is. I mean, it's 20 years old, guys. It still looks and sounds amazing and it's a feat that uh, you know even peter jackson couldn't replicate replicate he tried to go back and do it with with the hobbit it didn't work you know so it was just it was really just the right movie at the right time i think uh that's why casual audience has kind of hopped on board with it as well and it brought in a whole new generation of tolkien fans you know people that would never would have read lord of the rings if those movies weren't such such uh, big hits and just done as well as they were but yeah that definitely will always be one that that stays with me See, your film adaptations or TV adaptations. Like, this is really small font. I mean, you guys are like, can this guy read? I think TV adaptations, if the budget's there. If the budget's really, really lousy, not so much. Because I think, obviously, in TV, you, you, you've got time to develop everything done the right way. Plus, you get these filmmakers who are like, oh, we're doing our own thing. We want to put our own spin onto it. So it feels like ours. It gives them the opportunity to do that without taking stuff out of the original story or trying to do a you know 1,000 page book in a you know an hour and a half or a two hour movie I think that's usually the way it goes but yeah TV if the budget is there what book needs an adaptation the first law would make an amazing adaptation if not the first law I'd have to go with Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn I think that either one of those would translate to TV so easily and so well and fill that Game of Thrones sized void in a fantasy TV watcher's heart. I think it really could step up and be everything you didn't get with Witcher. Everything I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, guys, but the things I don't feel like you're going to get with Wheel of Time, I feel like you would get with either of those series if they adapted either one of those faithfully. It could be really, really good. Your favorite book world, broken record here, but the first law, I mean, there's a reason that is my favorite modern fantasy series because I love spending time in that not so safe universe and definitely far from predictable it's a very very bleak place i wouldn't like to live but i love to visit it you know uh sitting on my sofa and not actually being there your favorite writing style man this is tough favorite writing style. i mean i i think with this is it's it's just so different i mean i want to say stephen king because obviously that's my favorite author and i do love his writing style but if I'm sticking with like fantasy or something and something that I think that, that, that more viewers of this channel would probably appreciate, I think I'm going to say John Gwynn. Uh, I, I love the way that he writes action in a way that never feels exhaustive because there are some authors I really enjoy. I'm not going to name names because I hope that they come on this channel someday, but they write action scenes. Sometimes they go on so long, they get a little exhausting. That or they underwrite them to where I'm like, you're, you're, you're using these terms that make no sense and I don't know if necessarily... Uh, I understand what's going on in your scene right now. He writes action in such a way that it's just cinematic, it's just brilliant, it's just fantastic, and you feel like you're watching a movie. And I think that's uh, because his writing style is so accessible by everyone, but his character development is so good too that you know he's got the reputation. I call him Vicious Pen for a reason because he's got no problems taking those characters away from you. And, uh, and the thing is, is like you, you're, you're, it's like a Pixar movie. You go into it expecting it, 
And you're like, you're not going to get me this time, Pixar. And every time they get you, right? Same thing with John Gwynn. That's the only time I guarantee you'll hear John Gwynn compared with Pixar. But he's great, guys, if you haven't picked that up yet. What's a book that you love that people don't know about? I think most people know about everything that I've probably read. I don't have very many, hey, have you ever heard of this? And people are like, no, I haven't. Um, maybe I'll take it back to some comics here. Now, I know some people know about it. They know about it more from the AMC television series. But I can say Preacher, the comic Preacher by Garth Ennis. Because I, well, this is, this is a cult favorite kind of comic, and I'm sure that people have heard of it. I feel like every once in a while, and most of the time, I'll find someone who, every once in a while I'll find someone who reads it, but most of the time people are like, I've never heard of it. And then they read it and they're blown away. So I think it's a comic that is really, really brilliant. It's my favorite comic of all time, guys, for a reason. You know, it's above Hellblazer, it's above Watchmen, all those, because I love the journey that those three characters go on in that short, short-lived series. It's really, it's really good, guys. I, I really highly recommend Preacher. Uh, I, I guess it's about the best I got because I can't think of a single novel that I, I love that people are like, I've never heard of that before. I'm, I'm sure I'll think of one later. What we got, what is the most popular book that you hated? <laughs> Name of the Wind? Yeah, watch that video. <laughs> Read the comments on that video. Unpopular Opinion. Name of the Wind. Good times. Uh, your favorite childhood reads? I, mean, I already mentioned like Narnia and things like that. I'm going to go with uh, the, those Conan com comics that Marvel did. I read those long before I ever read. I mean, it's, I just started reading the books in 2019, you guys. So the Savage Sword of Conan, things like that, really were adapted a lot of those stories. Uh, that Mr. Howard's original stories and stuff. It's just, it's just so good. I mean, that thing went on forever. But yeah, I, I read a ton of those uh, when I was younger. What is a book that changed your life? I mean, I, I've i talked about it at length, guys. I mean, you, 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 a lot of people think things like that are hyperbolic because a lot of people will say, oh yeah, that book will change your life. And then you read it and you're like, I guess. I mean, I think everyone has like that one book that literally can do that or a movie that can do that. For me with Dune, it changed the way that I looked at everything reading that as a very impressionable teenager. You know, I was very confused about life, you know, and it, it helped me with a lot of things. It helped me with everything from confidence to fear to how I felt about political leaders. You know, it changed my life in every way you can imagine. And I know people find that silly, but not to me. You know, just like my wife says Fight Club, that book changed her life. And, you know, at first I thought, man, that kind of sounds, kind of, kind of sounds silly. And then she told me why. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. So I, I think it's a different book, obviously, for everyone. But I do think that some people will say it and not mean it. But I mean it definitely with Dune. And I, I, I think that you probably have that book as well that kind of really you think struck a nerve in you and you will never, ever forget it. And you will apply those things to your everyday life. That was Dune for me. What book did you hate in school? The Great Gatsby. Oh my lord, what a terrible, terrible, dreadful story. You know, I don't like to I don't like to get down on the classics too much because I think there's a place for them and I feel like a lot of people are trying to forget about them or or delete them from history. And I think classics are very, very important. But man, Great Gatsby was just rough for me. I think that guy's a psychopath. Uh, I talked about I have a video uh, of uh, unpopular opinion of uh, classics I did not like and Great Gatsby was one of them because I just think that Gatsby himself absolutely crazy crazy watch that watch that video a feel-good book you know and i don't know if because you might be like i don't know mike a lot of terrible stuff happens in there but i think about a book feel good to me is something that's kind of uplifting no matter how hard the road was to get there and i always constantly think of to kill a mockingbird to kill a mockingbird really has a lot of important life lessons but that's my one i think that might be one of the places where my love for the coming of a genre come from is because of the, the, the journey that scout and those people take in that book it's just it's a brilliant brilliant book guys i i i stomp about the classics a lot on this channel and that's one of the earliest that i ever read because it's, it's just spectacular and uh, i challenge you not to uh, you know have some kind of an emotional journey reading that book a book that makes you cry i did a whole video about books that make you cry but you asked me go ahead pick one book that will make you cry 100 percent of the time every single time guys and it is where the red fern grows i challenge you to prove that you do not have a beating heart in your chest and read where the red fern grows and do not shed a tear because i question if you are actually alive because that book destroyed me to a point where in that video i can't even talk about that book without welling up a little bit it is so so emotional and it's just 
you think it deals with dogs, so it's kind of a cheat code, but no, guys, it's more than that. It, it really is. There's so much, so much heart in that book, and it will break your heart in every every way. What's your favorite reading snack? I usually don't try to eat too much while I read because I don't want it to get on the pages, you know. Uh, but I guess if I got to pick up maybe sunflower seeds because sunflower seeds is something. Um, that I will do to not snack on stuff I probably shouldn't be snacking on, you know, you know, pork rinds or something like that, or chocolate. Uh, actually, pork rinds are okay. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking of that scene in Ninja Turtles, pork rinds, pork rinds. Uh, if anybody remembers that reference, you know, high five, cowabunga. But um, not Ninja Turtles, but I mean that movie from 1990. I see, I derail way too much. But yeah, I try not to eat too much while I read. What is your favorite reading position? I like the recliner. The recliner that I have in my living room is my favorite because... It's not sitting up on my desk, like I say with hard cards, like when I'm sitting up. And I don't like just completely laying down because I will fall asleep. I mean, I am I am old, guys. I will fall asleep reading in bed a lot. But I think the recliner is perfect because you're completely relaxed, but your head's at a way that you're not falling asleep so much. So I would definitely say the recliner. Natural light or lamp light. I used to be all about the natural light, guys. And then I got this really expensive BenQ light over here that it helped reduce eye strain game changer absolute game changer I, it's very expensive guys it's very expensive but it is very much worth it outside or inside do you mean to read i mean it doesn't matter i live in houston texas guys which is basically a swamp and what that means is if you take your paper books outside it's so humid the pages might actually rip as you turn them uh so yeah i'm always going to be inside because we have this thing in the states you guys if you're not watching in the states called central air conditioning meaning our whole house feels the same temperature and it's great because you can make it just about any temperature you want depending on how much money you want to spend and when you ask yourself how much would you pay for comfort I think we all know the answer if you have a, if you live in a swamp like I do breaking the cover or keeping it smooth smooth I will not break a spine I have been reading those beast Malazan books and I've done five of them and I have not cracked a spine yet I've had to do some kind of maneuvering with the reading but I've done it I just I I look at my old Star Wars EU books that are just beat to shit because I did crack the spine and you know a lot of people are like oh it gives them character it means they're well loved look I love the books just fine when they look brand new, too. All right. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Do you read in any other languages? No. No, I don't. Um, I live in Houston, and we have a lot of Spanish speakers here. We're very close to Mexico, so we have a lot of Spanish speakers here. Most people here, I don't want to say most, but a lot of people here are bilingual, uh, English or Spanish. So uh, I, I took my, my two years of Spanish in high school, you know, and I picked up a lot along the way. You know, uh, guys on the baseball team taught me all the, the bad words. Uh, those were important. Those were very important. But uh, I, I was like, okay, I really want to learn more of this because they could be really good on your resume if you're bilingual, right? And then I met my wife. Perfectly fluent in Spanish, 100% reading, writing, talking. She can kick some ass in Spanish. And I said, all right, I married my C-3PO. I got a translator now. I don't need to learn Spanish anymore. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I would never really learn to do any other language since then. I don't know how much information space I've got left up here to learn one now. But, hey, I encourage it if that's uh, something that's working for you. What book series do you want to finish this year? Am I going to finish a book series this year? Malazan doesn't finish until next year. Crichton's not a series. He's standalones. What are we doing? We're not doing Memory Star on Thornton. Poppy War. I guess I haven't finished Poppy War yet. You know, I'm about one and a half through those. And I do plan to, to, to finish Dragon Republic and uh, and Burning God sometime uh, this fall. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll say Poppy War. What book release are you most excited about right now? And if you asked me a week ago, it would have been uh, Wisdom of Crowds because the last first law book, right? Um, potentially. Potentially the last first law book. Uh, I don't really have a Stephen King book that I'm looking forward to yet next year. Probably go Red Rising 6. I don't know if it's coming out next year. You know, Pierce Brown keeps uh, posting, you know. So, I mean, I feel like he's coming out of his uh, his hibernation. When he's writing, he focuses and he doesn't do a lot of social media time and stuff. And I see him, he's posting stuff on Instagram all the time. But he might just be taking a break. I don't know. I don't know if this book's coming out next year or not. Uh, I, I saw that he said... Uh, you know, he had to throw 200 pages of manuscript in the garbage because he just wasn't satisfied with it. And I admire that. Take the time to do it right, I say. Uh, but yeah, right now, I say of, of all my incomplete series that are still being written, um, yeah, that one. And you're going to be like, why did you say A Song of Ice and Fire? Because, guys, I, I, I no, stop it. Stop it. Uh, what, do you have a favorite book influencer? Well, I do. Uh, I've I mentioned many times before, I think that Philip Chase is my favorite booktuber because I feel like 
Uh, not necessarily that we don't have anything in common. I, I mean, I do. I think, I mean, you saw when me and Philip get together and talk, we could talk forever and not run out of things to say. But I say, I think that his review style is so much different than mine because, you know, I talk about, hey, these are the things I liked about the book. And he breaks down everything that makes him go, you know, full of nuance and meaning and all these themes and illusions and stuff. He does it the way that, uh, you know, a, a college professor would do it. But I, that's what I love about his channel. It's very, very different than mine. And when I watch Philip, I feel like I'm learning something. And that's why I love watching his channel so much. But as far as uh, is like recommendations, someone that I will always listen to regardless I have to go with my guy Petrick, and this was he's got his own channel now. But I go with Petrick from uh, from Goodreads. If it wasn't for Petrick, I never probably would have started reading John Gwynn. And John Gwynn's like my second favorite fantasy author right now. So uh, I'll always give anything that Petrick says. I'll always uh, give it a chance based off of his track record. We don't agree on everything, but most things we seem to. And he's helped introduce me to some really really great series. So uh, yeah, that would probably be it there. Do you have a channel? A blog or a social media feed be kind of hard to be watching this right now if I didn't uh, don't really have like a blog outside like the community tab on on YouTube here uh, social media I, I've got uh, you know what you discord I've got Instagram I got Facebook um, you know all those things basically anything except Twitter <laughs> No comment. But uh, yeah, yeah, I got I got those. If you want to you want to check those out, the links to everything's down below. Goodreads, all that. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I guess there. And then finally, 50 is tag your friends. Well, uh, I can't tag all of them because uh, they are all awesome. And I don't really do the whole tag thing as we kind of proved here because no one ever tagged me here. But uh, <laughs> that's not a guilt thing. It's just a it's just kind of a funny thing about like it's it's just it's just weird. I'll be like can I play too? You know, so none of the channels that are bigger than mine are tagging me, guys. So if anybody wants to tag me, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. I'll listen. But I, I didn't really get into the tag thing really when it kind of exploded. And that's probably really why. And, and that's that's fine. It just wasn't really my thing. But I do see something like this every once in a while. And then you got someone whose uh, energy is so infectious like Alan's is. And I say, you know what? I kind of really want to do that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So that's kind of why I want to do that here. But I'll, I'll tag some channels in the description below that uh, I, I consider like automatic watches because uh, I think they're just great people and I love and value their opinions on all things books. But guys, that was my 50 rapid fire questions. You wanna answer any of the questions below, you got some time on your hands, hey, go for it. You just wanna answer some of them, just put the number, I've got the number in the com in the description there. Pick the number and give an answer and hey, I would love to hear what you think about it. Uh, you wanna take a crap on any of these answers? Go for it, guys. I love that in the comments section. And uh, have yourselves an awesome week.